Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Boggs. I'm here with Mr. Boggs, my husband, who is really into science. And every year he comes to my classroom and he does a science day. So since we can't be together this year, we thought we would do our own science day for you in our backyard. So I'm gonna film Mr. Boggs doing a lot of really cool science experiments. Some of them you'll be able to try at home. All right, let's go. Okay friends, so unfortunately we're not at school today, but we have learned over the last few months the importance of hand washing. And this demonstration, this is a demonstration you can do at home using several things you probably have around your home. We're going to use some water, some black pepper, and some hand soap, okay? So Mrs. Boggs is going to come on up and I will show you how to do this. We're going to do this on a plate. You can do this either on a plate or in a bowl. You're gonna take just a little bit of water, just enough to cover the plate, just like so. And then you're going to sprinkle on some black pepper. Here I have a grinder, and we'll just grind up some of that pepper. And you'll see the, the black pepper specks in the water. Some of them float, some of them don't. We'll look at the ones that are floating, okay? So that pepper is on the water, and as we've learned that when we wash our hands for at least 20 seconds, those germs can go away. Let me demonstrate. I have not put any soap on my fingers. When I put my finger into the water, nothing happens to the pepper. But watch what happens when I put a little bit of soap into the water. Friends, what do you think will happen? Mm, make a prediction. What do you think mm. will happen when he puts his finger in the water on the plate? All right, let's watch. Wow. Yes. So that pepper that was floating has gone to the outside. So the soap actually pushes away all of those germs, or in this case, all of that pepper. And that's what helps clean our hands when we get them dirty and we get germs and things that we don't want on our hands. So very important to wash our hands, especially as people are getting sick from the virus. So this is a demonstration that you can do at home with your, the help of your parents. Now let's go to our next demonstration. Okay, friends, for our next demonstration, we're going to take some pennies, some vinegar and some salt. And you're welcome to join us for this next demonstration as well. So the pennies I have here, if Mrs. Boggs wants to come on up and take a look here at these pennies. Uh, Mrs. Boggs, are these pennies bright and shiny or a little bit dull and not so shiny? They look pretty dull and dirty. Yes, they look a little dull and kind of dirty. So these are some older pennies that uh, have gotten a little dirty, right? And that dirt is not really actually dirt from the ground. This is from the air, okay? Pennies start to uh, grow a little darker when uh, they're exposed to the air. We're going to make them a little less dirty, a little more sh shiny, right? So here's what we're going to do. And you can do this at home as well. We're gonna take just a quarter cup of vinegar. And yes, the vinegar, has a little smell to it. <laughs> it is okay. So we're gonna take a quarter cup of vinegar. We're gonna put it into a cup. And this vinegar really helps eat away at things, right? We call that an acid. Now we're gonna use a pinch of salt. So I'm going to take a pinch of salt, sprinkle that into the vinegar. Okay. So again, remember that our pennies right now are not so bright and shiny. Friends, what do you think will happen when we put the penny into the vinegar and salt? Mm, make a prediction, then you can see what will happen. All right, very good. So we're going to drop the pennies into the liquid. Okay, now one thing I recommend doing, just give the cup a little swirl. And we'll, we'll let it sit in there for a few seconds. And now let's take out our pennies and see what happened. 
Mrs. Boggs, what do you think? Wow, that penny looks way cleaner than the penny that you did not put in the water. Yeah, so we now have some bright, shiny pennies and we'll compare those to the other pennies. Mm, those look pretty dirty too. Yes, very good. Okay, so again, this is a, something that you can try out in your home. Yep. Very good. Okay, everyone. For our next demonstration, if you would like to participate at home, this is a demonstration that you might need the help of one of the adults in your home with, but it's a very fun and simple demonstration. We have here some water. Uh, we have some baking soda, some vinegar, and uh, some spaghetti. We have angel hair pasta, but any sort of spaghetti will work. So here's how to do this demonstration. You could take a bowl. We have a, a, a glass bowl, but if you have a bowl you pour your cereal into or something about this size, that'll work, okay? And we're going to fill up the bowl with some water, like so. And then we are going to take um, a half cup of the vinegar and you will see it's, it'll say it right there, half cup. So we'll take a half a cup of our vinegar and we're going to put it into the water. And the vinegar will blend right into the water, it'll mix right in, you don't need to do anything with that. And the next thing we will do is we'll take one tablespoon of our baking soda. But before we do that, what I'd like for you to do is take a strand of your pasta and break them into about we would say one inch so probably about the the length of your thumb okay so let's use about the the size of your thumb so about this big I might make mine a little bit smaller because I probably have a little bit bigger thumbs than you of course you have some pretty big kindergartners don't you <laughs> well they're they're almost first graders almost yeah. And, our, and our first graders are almost second graders. So. That's true. Very good. Okay. And so you can, and you can even make these different sizes if you'd like. Maybe one about the size of your fingernail. One maybe a little longer. So I have them in about six or seven different pieces. Okay. So the next thing I will do is take one cup of our baking soda. Or I'm sorry, one tablespoon. <laughs> one tablespoon of our baking soda. We're going to put it into our water, vinegar, and spaghetti mixture. What do you think will happen when I put our baking soda into the bowl? Mrs. Boggs, do you have a prediction? Hmm, I wonder if it'll make the noodles move because right now they're just floating at the top. Yeah, they're just sitting there. Okay, so when we do this demonstration, you will want to just take a, a small step back. Just don't put your face directly over the bowl. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh my goodness. Whoa, oh my. So be prepared, it may make a little mess. And we see all those bubbles, right? Do you, if you're participating at home, are you seeing bubbles in your bowl? So now we're seeing some of those bubbles disappear. And, huh, look at what's happening to our spaghetti. Oh, wow. Do you see the spaghetti dancing? It looks like it's moving in there. Yeah, so some of the spaghetti oh, is floating. Oh, that came back up. Yeah. That, and some of the spaghetti went to the bottom, sort of like it's dancing. Oh, that big one's coming back up again. So just oh. because it sank to the bottom doesn't mean that's where it's going to stay. Mm-hmm. And so we're still seeing some bubbles and those bubbles like to attach to the spaghetti. So the spaghetti and the bubbles are together and they come up and they, and all that air that's in those bubbles come into the air and those that spaghetti doesn't have the air anymore and it falls back down and it continues doing it over and over again until eventually 
we're not seeing nearly as many bubbles, okay? And those bubbles are bubbles of carbon dioxide, the same air that you breathe out all the time. I wonder what would happen if you put baking soda in the, in, in the um, bowl again. Oh, let's find out. Can you do it more than one time? Well, we will find out. So we'll take another, another tablespoon. If you'd like to try this at home, you may. Let's find out. Wow. Wow, so it can do it more than one time. It can. Now this reaction was not nearly as uh, powerful. We didn't see nearly as many bubbles. Why do you think that is, Mr. Boggs? Hmm. Well, when we use that vinegar, there's a, there's a, a, a what we call a chemical reaction. So that vinegar and that baking soda, they like to create gas bubbles. Eventually, they're, the vinegar just loses, is not able to make those bubbles anymore. So eventually, if you keep doing this over and over and over again, well, you wouldn't get any more bubbles. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right, we'll move on to our next demonstration. All right, everyone. For our next demonstration is one, again, you can do in your home. This one will need the help of your adult in your uh, family. For this demonstration, we are going to use some baking soda, uh, some vinegar, a paper towel, and a sandwich bag, okay? So uh, Mrs. Boggs is going to come a little closer. We're gonna take a look here. So for the first thing we will do, we will measure out a half a cup of vinegar. So here is a half cup of vinegar. And what we're going to do with this vinegar is we're going to put the vinegar into the sandwich bag, okay? So here, we're gonna put our vinegar into the sandwich bag, just like so. So now we have this. What does the vinegar look like? Mm, stop for a minute and maybe you can say it out loud. What do you think the vinegar looks like? It looks like water, right? But it has a really funny smell, right? So that's how we know it's vinegar and we do not want to drink the vinegar. Okay, so what I would recommend doing is putting the bag of vinegar into a bowl, okay, as we do our next step. The next step is to take two tablespoons, it'll say TBS, we're gonna take two tablespoons of the baking soda and we're going to put it into a paper towel. And actually for this, I'm gonna take the paper towel and I'm going to just uh, make it a little bit smaller because what we're going to do with the paper towel is fold it like a burrito, okay? So here's our paper towel. We'll put one and two tablespoons of the baking soda into this paper towel burrito. Okay, the next step is, I'll let Mrs. Boggs kind of show you how we're gonna make this burrito. Just sort of fold it together like this. Sort of makes like a pocket for the baking soda. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this baking soda burrito, put it into the sandwich bag, and they're going to seal up the sandwich bag. What do you think will happen to our sandwich bag. Hmm, Mrs. Boggs, what do you think? Hmm, I don't know. I'm, th I'm thinking that not all of the liquid is gonna be just sitting at the bottom of the bag. Hmm. That's my prediction. That's your prediction. Okay, well, I, I sort, sort of already know what might happen, but we'll find out together, okay? So let's drop the burrito into the sandwich bag. Let's count down with me, three, Two, one. Uh-oh. Doing that so fast. It's going so fast. Uh-oh. Come closer. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's getting bigger. Oh dear. 
Look how big that sandwich bag is now. Wow. Whoa. It kind of looks like a balloon. It's really tight. It's really tight. Oh, I see some bubbles. You see it kind of moving? So we have some bubbles. This sandwich bag is getting really, really, really big. I don't know if it will be able to keep all that air inside. Hmm. I still hear, do you hear the fuzz? The bit, the, the, the fizzing? The sand, whoa! whoa. <laughs> My that, goodness. That little shake <laughs> yes. activated it somewhere. Yes, very good. So there you have it. What happened there was that baking soda and vinegar had a chemical reaction and we were able to get all that air into this bag and that that air took up so much space and filled up our bag. Pretty cool stuff. Now when you do this at home, remember not to put your eyes directly over it, okay? But you can shake the bag a little bit if that helps it um, speed up the process. And then take a step back. And then I, <laughs> yes, take a step back. Very good. All right, let's move on to our next demonstration. Welcome back everyone to our next demonstration. And for this demonstration, we're going to use some diet pop or diet soda, a Mentos candy, and we will use a push pin. And how many of us have ever opened up a, a bottle or a can of pop? And we hear that fizz. It goes Sometimes if you shake it up a little too much, and you, those bubbles start causing the pop get on your hands well <laughs> music little, break it's a little noisy of a neighborhood so those bubbles are the same bubbles that are from the reaction that made their carbon di dioxide from our baking soda and vinegar mixing together the same type of bubbles so what we're going to do is see if we can cause the pop to fizz a little bit faster, okay? For this demonstration, this is a demonstration that can be done by adults only, okay? So if uh, you want to ask one of your adults to do this, you can do so, but you will need to stand at a safe distance away. Also for your adult, one thing you'll wanna do is cover your eyes. You can use eyeglasses or you can use some sunglasses like I have here, yeah. Very good. Oh my, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Boggs knows how silly I can be, right? <laughs> yes, if, if you know, that was Arnold Schwarzenegger and he likes to do that impression often. Yes, <laughs> very good. Okay, so let's take a look here at the Mento. Oh. So this is just your plain old Mento candy. They're very delicious, make your breath smell mm. very good. Okay, the next thing we will do We'll gr grab one of our push pins, set those down here. We're gonna take the lid, and we don't want this to fizz too much, so I'm gonna open this slowly. Okay, so we just get a little bit of fizz, and that is perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put the Mento, attach it, to the push pin. So I push the push pin through the lid. So now I don't know if I've seen that part before. Yeah. So the Mento will sit at the top of the lid. Then what I'm going to do is put the lid back on. The Mento will just sit at the top of the bottle. And then when I pull the push pin, the Mento will drop into the pop. What do you think will happen? Mm. This is a very good question, isn't it? Mrs. Barnes, you've seen this one before. I have, but I don't want to give it away. Right. I feel like if I give my prediction, I'm going to take the fun away. Yes, so I, I will let Mrs. Boggs hold on to the little secret for just a few more seconds. Mrs. Boggs, are you ready? I am ready. All right, students, are you ready? All right, here we go. Countdown with me. I can probably hear you from here, okay? We're going to do a countdown for five. All right, so here we go. We'll put the Mento in. Okay, let me hear you. Five, four, three, two, one. 
one. Whoa. Oh, I can hear it getting louder. Yes. We'll shake it up. Look at all that soda shooting Whoa. into the sky. It's kind of like a mist. It's yes. a little hard to see on the camera, but it's misting up. Yes. It's actually going pretty high. It's blowing into our neighbor's yard. Wow. Coming out of there. So we're getting lots and lots of bubbles. That reaction is just happening, happening so quickly. Wow, wow let's keep it. There's a lot of bubbles at the top. Yeah. Way faster than if you just opened it like normal. Yeah. So those that Mento, oh, it's getting a little bit more. That Mento is actually allowing those bubbles to release. And as it releases, all that pop comes shooting out because we build lots and lots and lots and lots of pressure. Very good. All right. Would you like to see that again? I'm going to guess if they were here, they would be saying yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> when I do this at the school, we, we go outside to the playground and do this every, uh, every year. And of course, everyone wants to see it again, right? <laughs> so so you're this in time, luck. This time we're going to do this demonstration with uh, uh, red soda. And uh, we're gonna see if it looks any different with red soda. We've used the orange soda. Mm. And as much, even though we still have a lot of soda left in that bottle, it's lost all that fizz. So mm. it would not taste very good. Oh, that's, a, that's good to mention. Yes. Don't drink your pop after you do the experiment it, at home. It would be like if you left pop sit out for a week. It mm. tastes very, that very has flat. A flat, yucky taste, yep. Yes, very good. And also, it might taste a little bit like Minto. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a little minty. That Minto's still floating around in there. Yeah. Or it's dissolved. Yeah, there's still a little, Let's take a look here. See if we can see it. It's harder. Oh, there it is, right there. Oh, I see it. It looks kind of white in that yep. bottom little. It's, it's rubber. definitely dissolved. Uh, it's definitely smaller than it was. All right. So let's do our next demonstration. So we're going to once again take our bottle, our bottle cap, and stick the pin through. And it does take a little bit of force. So be careful. Yep, so for the parents who are doing cookie. this, or the adults, yep, you do have to push hard. Okay, so our Mento is set. I'm going to set it on top of the bottle. Do we think anything different might happen this time? Hmm. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, does the color really matter? Yes, let's find out. I've never done this with Red Pop before, oh, so okay. we're going to find out together. Okay? Very good. Count down with me. Five. Six. I, I mean, five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Whoa. Oh, my. Going this way. I feel like it's faster than the other one. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. That looks like a fountain. It Going really does. Very, very fast in the air. Wow. Wow. Look at all that soda shooting out. Ooh, it's getting me a little wet. I think I think my hands are gonna feel a little a little sticky. Yeah, well, that's why we use diet pop. Because, oh, you're right. It won't feel so sticky. Yeah, so we use diet pop because um, if you use regular pop, it does really leave a very sticky mess all over the place. And well, I like as uh, I don't like a huge mess. This will keep our mess not so sticky. It's still going. I think this one went longer than the orange pop. Yeah, and you shook the orange one a few times too, but it uh, it fizzled out a little faster. Yes. This one, this one is still going strong. This one's still shooting out. So I don't know, everyone. I think I think the uh, the red the red pop wins as far as the uh, maybe there's something in the dye pumping. that makes it react. I don't know. That could be could be more carbonation. Oh, you're right. 
there could be more carbonation. That's what makes all those bubbles. Mm-hmm. Oh, so seems like it's starting to slow down now. Could also be a, a, a fresher pop, one that's maybe been made more mm. recently so it's not as flat. It's hard really telling. We might have to try it again sometime. Maybe next year we'll try it and see if we get the same result. That's the great thing about science is if there is a reason for it, we can do that over and over and over again and get the same result. So we might have to find out next year if we get more bubbles from the red pop. But we definitely, I, Mrs. Boggs, I agree with you. I think yeah. we saw more bubbles with the red For pop. For sure.